We've done several different home gym builds here on the channel. We've talked about a budget small home gym, an all out small home gym, a budget garage gym, and an all out garage gym. But one of the categories that we've never actually built for on the channel is a spare bedroom home gym, which is a pretty common scenario. So I wanted to touch on that in this video because with the small home gym setups that I did in the past, that was more like if you're working out in your bedroom or if you're working out in an office or something like that, your home office, and you have just a tiny little section of a room to work out in, so like a microscopic home gym. Whereas if you have an entire spare bedroom, you have a whole lot more space available and it's kind of halfway in between the small home gym setup that we've done in the past and a garage gym setup. So you can fit a full home gym in a small guest bedroom, but there are some space constraints since the average bedroom size in the US is 132 square feet. So we wanna keep that in mind with this gym setup. And when we go through this equipment, we're gonna go in order of most to least important. The first category of equipment that we're going to look at is going to be the power rack. And when it comes to a spare bedroom build, you're going to want to be thinking about the height of the rack. With most homes in the U.S., the bedrooms are going to be eight foot tall ceilings. And so most power racks will fit into most bedrooms, but it is something to pay special attention to because the typical power rack is going to be somewhere between the 90 to 93 inch height mark which will fit in an eight foot ceiling but if you're planning on doing pull-ups with your rack you would be hitting your head on the ceiling and you wouldn't be able to get a full pull-ups so you would want to get a little bit shorter of a rack to make sure that you could do pull-ups in your rack so for that reason one of the options that we're going to take a look at is going to be the titan x3 the 82 inch variation so that way it has enough ceiling clearance to allow for those pull-ups if you're going to be using it for that purpose and it has a nice flat foot design so it's purpose built to not be bolted down which you can get a typical power rack and not bolt it down and be just fine we have a rogue 390 that we do not have bolted down and it's perfectly fine um, but this will be a little bit more stable if you're not bolting it down 660 bucks free shipping plenty of headroom for pull-ups and if you were to look at the titan series rack the shortest version of this rack is going to be 90 inches so we're not really going to look too much into this particular line and for the same reason we're not going to be looking at rogue in this video either because unless i miss something the shortest rack that they have that i saw was 90 inches so we're not going to be looking at those either so we have the x3 which would be comparable to the rep pr 4000 because you have your three by three uprights and your 5 8 inch hardware but then when it comes to rep, we have several different options that I want to consider. So we have the, again, 4000, which is gonna be equivalent to the X3, and we can get it in an 80 inch variation. Go ahead and customize this out. You can do the 24 inch depth, which will be a little bit shallower, but will give you more room in your spare bedroom gym, which is an important thing to consider. Do the safety straps, do the multi-grip pull-up bar, sandwich J-cups, and then they're out of stock on some of these other things. So we're looking at around a thousand bucks, free shipping for the 4,000. So it's a little bit more expensive, but one of the reasons why you might want to go with Rep versus Titan is one of the cool things you can do with a Rep rack is you can put on a lap pull low row attachment onto your rack. So that's an important thing to consider because that's a lot of extra versatility that you can add on to a rep rack. And to my knowledge, they're the only company out there that you can just have a purpose built lap pull low row bolted right onto the back of your rack. And so that's something to consider there. And then they also have the 
1100 line, which would be a flat foot uh, purpose built to not be bolted to the floor line of racks. And another cool thing about the 1100 is while this is their budget line of racks, you can customize the color at no extra charge and there's still a plethora of attachments which is not super common when we're talking about a budget line of racks so going back to the attachments you can have the lat pull low row attachment on the 1000 line as well which is something that's really cool so you can have your high cable pulley low cable pulley lots of lots and lots of extra exercises that you can add for not a whole lot of extra footprint, not a whole lot of extra money, and it's their budget line of racks. And if you are planning on going with one of the more expensive racks, there's a couple of things to consider. I'll go through this really quickly because I've touched on this in multiple videos in the past. When it comes to the 4,000 line versus the 5,000 line, there's really a couple of things to consider. The 5000 is going to be the top of the line, it's going to be the most expensive one, but what you get for that is you get one inch holes, so one inch hardware, so there's more attachments that you can add on to the rack itself, which is very important if you're in a small space like a spare bedroom and you want to get the absolute most variety possible out of that space since you can't have a bunch of pieces of equipment throughout a garage space you're going to need to have things that attach to the rack and can be broken down and put into the closet when you're done using them so you get the most attachments available most variety of attachments available with the 5000 line and you get numbered uprights all the way throughout and then with the 4000 line it's a little bit cheaper a little bit less expensive um, and then you have west side hole spacing right here, which if you're a power lifter might or might not be important to you. So basically you get a little bit more finely adjusted increments in the bench area for your uh, J cups and for your safeties. And then in exchange for that, you're getting a little bit less variety of attachments and you're losing out on some of the whole numbering. So with the 4,000 line, you have a, a whole number every five notches versus every single notch throughout the uprights, which in my opinion, you know, numbered every five notches, it, it's not gonna be very hard to find the correct hole and get everything lined up. So you're not really lo losing out on anything there. So really the thing to consider is you're trading the west side hole spacing for a little bit more attachment variety and a little bit more expensive when it comes to the 5000 line. So a fully decked out PR 4000, again, we're looking at a little under a thousand bucks. For a fully decked out PR 5000, we're looking at a little over a thousand bucks. So there's about $200 difference between these two racks. And very quickly looking at some of the other attachments so that you can maximize your rack and get the most out of your rack for this smaller home gym setup. You can get this leg roller attachment, which can serve a few different purposes. If you have the lap pull low row, then you can use this to hold your legs down when you're doing heavy lap pulls. Of course, you can use it as a leg roller, so you can do your split squats and things like that with your back foot elevated. You could put it down at the bottom of the rack to hold your feet down to do ab work and things like that. You can attach a landmine, you can do a dip horn, you can do extra weight storage if you wanted to add the weight storage onto the back of it. You have different J cups, band pegs right here. You have the spotter arms to go off the front of the rack. If you're gonna be lifting outside of the rack, you can get a belt squat attachment to go with your cable setup. You can have your front foot extensions to add a little bit of extra stability if you're not gonna be bolting down, which you're probably not gonna be if you're in a spare bedroom. Monolift, a few different things like that. And getting into the barbell, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. I would recommend the Deep Neural Power Bar EX. It's my personal favorite barbell that I've ever used. Has very aggressive knurling. It's very grippy. It's a very good bar. 
And if you wanted to save a little bit of money, you could go with the basic barbell save you a few hundred bucks there if you're on a budget. Getting into the weight plates, I need to give my typical spiel of buy used weight plates if you can find used weight plates. Check Facebook Marketplace, check Craigslist. If you have friends who are looking to sell their uh, pandemic equipment that they're not using anymore, get used weight plates, save money here if you can. There's no benefit to getting new plates when you could get used plates that will do the same exact thing. Because if we add in all of these plates, you can see how quickly that adds up. A thousand bucks just for these plates. And one of the considerations for a spare bedroom setup is if you're gonna be doing deadlifts, especially if you're doing heavy deadlifts, you're going to need to protect your floor so that you're not breaking the floor when you put the weight down on the ground. So I would always recommend going with Tractor Supply. You can get a double layer of stall mats to protect your floor, or you could just get a deadlift platform and put your rack on top of the deadlift platform and do it that way. Um, but you need to have some type of floor protection so that you're not breaking the hardwood or whatever floor you have underneath the weight. Weight tree, super simple. Just get the cheapest thing that you can find that'll get the job done. Another cable option that I wanted to mention if you either A, don't have the budget for adding the lat pull low row attachment or if you don't have enough space to extend the rack out away from the wall to accommodate the lat pull low row. I have a video showing how to do four different DIY pulley options that will only run you about 50 bucks. So it'll be a lot cheaper and will uh, allow to save some space. And one of those four options is actually a power rack mounted option. So you can check this video out if you want a cable, but you can't afford it or if you don't have the space for it. Next up is going to be your bench. If you're a power lifter and you want to have that competition bench to be practicing on, you can go with the FB5000 competition flat bench. We personally own this bench and I absolutely love it. I don't have a single negative thing to say about it. So that is an option there. Or if you wanna go with an adjustable bench to get the absolute most versatility out of your bench, we have the AB5100, which I absolutely love. And you can get the little leg attachment that comes off the top if you wanna do decline presses or decline ab work and things like that. So a whole lot of extra versatility there. The one thing that some people will complain about with this bench is when it is in the completely flat position, there's a bit of a gap between the butt pad and the back pad. If that is something that bothers you, which it personally doesn't bother me, but if it's something that bothers you, you can get the AB5000 zero gap adjustable bench, which is essentially the same bench as the 5100, except for the seat pad is on a slider so that no matter what angle you have the seat or the back pad at respective to each other, you can slide that seat back and forth so that there is zero gap. I also wanted to briefly touch on the Super Bench Pro. The thing that is really cool about this bench is the insane amount of attachments that are available for it so you can get so much versatility out of this bench. But the one thing that I would say for this particular setup, since we do have a power rack and there are a lot of attachment options for a rack, some of these are unnecessary and you could just get them for the rack itself and sometimes get them for cheaper in some scenarios as well. So you could get the leg attachment for the AB5000 or 5100. You could get a dip attachment for the power rack itself. I don't really find this part to be necessary, period. Um, the pull-up bar, you could just get on your power rack. The couple of things that I do think are very useful for this setup, if you wanted to go with the Superbench Pro, would be the leg extension, leg curl, attachment that would be really nifty to have access to and then there's the preacher curl pad 
if you wanted to do that as well. So those would be the couple that I might would want to get if I got this bench. Next, getting into the dumbbells, we're pretty much going to have to go with adjustable dumbbells due to the space constraints of being in a spare bedroom. One of my personal favorite options is going to be the Iron Master adjustable dumbbells which feel like fixed dumbbells. They feel better than some fixed dumbbells that I've used in commercial gyms. They adjust from five pounds all the way up to 180 pounds if you get all the expansions. And they store in this very tightly compacted storage stand. So they take up very, very little footprint. But one of the things that you do give up with these dumbbells in exchange for them feeling like fixed dumbbells and being so expandable, they don't change out quite as quickly as something like the power blocks or the Nuo bells. They're still quicker than traditional spin lock dumbbells. You can change all four sides in about 25 to 30 seconds, depending on how big of a jump you're making. So they're pretty quick. You can change from exercise to exercise, give you about 30 seconds to rest, and then boom, you're ready to go again. But you're not gonna be doing supersets or anything like that or circuits with these dumbbells unless you're gonna be using the same weight for each exercise. But with the Power Block Elites, these only expand up to 90. They don't have knurled handles and they don't feel like traditional fixed dumbbells. And then the Nuo Bells, they do feel like traditional fixed dumbbells and they have knurled handles, but they only go up to 80 pounds and they're not expandable. So that's kind of the consideration there for this particular setup. If you're only going to be using your dumbbells for accessory exercises and you're not as concerned about the needing to go above 80 pounds, I might would go with the Nuo Bells but just for the sheer amount of versatility and being able to go up in weight over time, it's hard not to recommend the Iron Masters. And then of course you could always go with something like Olympic dumbbell handles, which take up essentially zero floor space because you could just throw these in the closet or you could put them behind your rack or in the corner when you're done with them and you already have your Olympic plates anyway and so you can go as heavy as you would ever need to go with dumbbells for only 90 bucks so that would be a worthy consideration as well as long as you're okay with giving up that traditional dumbbell feel and one bonus accessory that i wanted to throw in here at the tail end is monkey feet by animal house this is a very clever little invention that allows you to attach a dumbbell to your foot so you can do all kinds of exercises here especially if you get two of them you can do things like leg extensions leg curls kickbacks uh, ab work you can do all kinds of exercises with the monkey feet and they take up no floor space at all you can just toss them in a drawer toss them in the closet i've used these things extensively and absolutely love them and the last piece of equipment that i wanted to consider for this home gym setup would be a functional trainer with a functional trainer the one thing here is that they're very very heavy so if this is a second story room or if you have a basement or crawl space under your spare bedroom rather than a concrete slab I don't know that it would be a good idea to use a functional trainer. <laughs> I would say the, the best bet here would be if you're on a first story house or first, first story room with a concrete slab under it so you don't have to worry about the floor under this piece of equipment. And this will fit into an eight foot ceiling room. And if you're a little bit more limited on the depth and width of your functional trainer, you could go with the 3000 series, which is a little bit smaller as well. And the functional trainer is kind of a bonus option because obviously a functional trainer is very expensive and not strictly necessary if you already have a barbell and dumbbells and the high cable and the low cable. 
but if you just really wanted to have all the functionality of a small commercial gym in your spare bedroom, you could add in the functional trainer and boom, you'll never need another piece of equipment for the rest of your life. That's gonna be it for this all out spare bedroom gym build. Tell me about your spare bedroom setup down in the comments. If you wanna check out our all out space saving home gym build, you can click here. Or if you wanna check out our all out garage gym build, click here. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week.